I wish you were here now, Quincy. You were always there for me when I needed you. Even now, it's your friends who've made me strong enough to carry out what I must do. First it was Father Janos who started me on this agonizing task. Now with the aid of your old allies, it looks like we'll end this horrible scourge. So much has happened these past few days. Mr. Alexander Morris. Thank you. Alexander. Arthur, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your kindness while I've been in your city. And now for you to sponsor me in London's most prestigious club. Nonsense. Your brother and I were extremely close. Here, let me introduce you to some of the other members of the Hades Club. Devlin. Alexander, I'd like you to meet Devlin Goldacre. Devlin, Alexander Morris. I believe I've mentioned his late brother, Quincy. Yes, you have. Mr. Goldacre, this certainly is a pleasure. It will be an honor to be accepted into your club. So, this is the brother of the famous Quincy Morris. <laughs> I suppose even London isn't big enough for more than one Texan at a time. What brings you here? Well, it's an unusual story, really. I received a letter from a Romanian priest telling me I should investigate the circumstances surrounding my brother's stabbing. Ah, your Romanian priest couldn't have directed you to a more peculiar city. And now, with the murders in the newspapers... <laughs> oh, do shut up, Leopold. Never mind our Czechoslovakian drunk and his ramblings. So, how long have you been in our fair city? Well, a number of months, actually. I got a bit sidetracked from my investigation when I met Anisette. Since we became engaged and her father took ill, I really haven't had the time to pursue the matter further. Yes, well, <laughs> I can see how Anisette could have that effect on a man. <laughs> Excuse me, sirs. I have a message from Mr. Morris. For me? Thank you. Good Lord. It's a note from Mr. Bowen's doctor. Mr. Bowen has just suffered a fatal heart attack. I have sedated Miss Bowen and would appreciate your presence tomorrow morning. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, perhaps I should go home. I could do with some rest as well. Pardon me. Death is such a dreadful business. Oh. And a set? Anna said you must let him go. Andrew is gone. I know, but it's so hard. I miss him so. Let me call the doctor to remove his body. The sooner he's in the ground, the sooner his soul can you rest. You think <laughs> that death can take her from me? Oh, Daddy. Anna said, no! From joining the Hades Club to hearing about Andrew's death, I do not believe I've ever had a more eventful evening, nor do I ever hope to again. And on top of everything else, a most disturbing dream. I am finally in London and have decided to keep a diary to help me in my search. A record of my travel should prove invaluable, since my only clues have come from Quincy's letters. Now I plan to seek out those with him when he died. It was not at all difficult to begin my investigations. One of Quincy's friends, Arthur Holmwood, is quite prominent in London society. I hope to meet the rest of Quincy's friends soon. Can the truth of my brother's death be far away? While it has been quite a while since I've last written, there is a good reason for this neglect, however. The most beautiful woman in the world. I met Anna Set Bowen one night at the theater, and my thoughts have since been of nothing but her. What an amazingly beautiful night. Never has the sky been as clear nor the stars as crisp. I have asked Anna Set to marry me, and she has accepted, if only Andrew, her father, hadn't come down with a strange malady.
From joining the Hades Club to hearing about Andrew's death, I do not believe I've ever had a more eventful evening, nor do I ever hope to again. And on top of everything else, a most disturbing dream. 7 o'clock a.m. Well, off, sir, as soon as you tell me where you'd like to go. I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. I'm pleased to say that we have finally arrived at our destination, sir. Good day, driver. Have a good day, sir. This is Father Janos' calling card. He lives in Bistritz, Romania. London's weather makes a handkerchief indispensable. This is a photo of my fiancée, Anaset Bowen. This is a guide to London's museums. It's the note I received from Andrew Bowen's doctor. This is my satchel, where I can store the items I obtain for later use. This map is handy, providing me with travel times within London. 7.05 a.m. I keep track of the day's fleeting hours with this pocket watch. The addresses of people I know are written here. I record my thoughts and recollections within this journal. I'm so glad you're here. Shh, it's all right. Where's the doctor? He's gone. He said it was a heart attack put on by shock. Shock? An open window in this weather. I shall have to talk with Miss Culpepper. Oh, Alexander, I'm so tired. Why do things have to go away? Why can't all the things we love stay forever? I went to comfort Anisette in her time of grief. Poor Andrew. I cannot forget his face. Horrible. Locked in sheer terror, and white as the odd bit of cloth clutched in his hand. Seven thirty five AM This is the strange white cloth I found in Andrew Bowen's hand. Hmm. It will take me fifteen minutes to go from Notting Hill to Kensington. Where can I take you today, sir? Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington. I'm pleased to say that we've arrived at our destination, sir. A good day to you, driver. And a good day to you, sir. Morris, isn't it? Mr. Goldacre. Indulge my curiosity. Why has Arthur sponsored you into our distinguished club? What in the world makes you think you belong? A gift, really. Because of his friendship with my brother. Do you know how old this club is? Now, Arthur tells me that it dates to the turn of the century. He's wrong. It's far older than that. Typical of you Americans. You can't think any farther back than your own whelp history. Age is no indication of virtue. Take your immortal institution here. What does Hades Club mean, anyway? It's rather obvious. 
Abandon all hope, ye who enter. We're in hell, my boy. I was amazed to discover what a rude boar Devlin Goldacre really is. He's quite unhappy with my membership in his club, and told me so in no uncertain terms. Eight twenty AM Good day, sir. Where am I I'll be taking you? I think I shall remain here, driver. Thank you. By carriage, it will take 30 minutes to go from Kensington to Westminster. And where can I take you today, sir? I'd like to go to 19 St. Augustine's, Westminster. I'm pleased to say that we have finally arrived at our destination, sir. A good day to you, driver. Good day, sir. Arthur is busy just now. I'm sure he'll be with you in a moment. Yes, he was my carriage driver. Ah. I had sent him to deliver this package and was beginning to wonder about his late return. Well, where was this package bound, sir? To the residence of Mr. Jonathan Harker. Oh, Let's 56, Rochester, Marble Arch. <laughs> it was a gift for his son, young Quincy. Well, thank you so much, sir. Well, I suppose this belongs to you, then. <laughs> we found it by the body. Decapitation is a most horrible crime. Strange. There's no accounting for the blood loss. What a grisly shock. I went to visit Arthur Holmwood only to discover that his coachman had been killed, decapitated, with complete loss of blood. I cut my visit short, but not before learning Jonathan Harker's address. And where will we be off to on this fine day? Please take me to 98 Rutherford, Westminster. Right on time, sir. A good day to you, driver. And a good day to you, sir. That paper's not for a weak order today, and those who lose their heads easily. <laughs> right, messy it is. That fella with his head cut off and all, his blood gone. Ooh. Oh, he needs a drink. It's to the saucy jack when this day's over. Saucy jack? Haven't you heard of it, Gov? The best pub in the Strand. Me mouth is watering already for a mug of Rebecca's ale. <laughs> I found some curious articles in the paper and pasted them below. Gruesome murder in West End. Murder most foul was committed in the West End last evening. The body of George O'Keefe, 47, was found at 7.30 a.m. near a tavern of dubious repute. Reports indicate the victim was lured into an alley, beaten and decapitated. The victim's head was left near the body. Oddly, no blood was found at the scene, suggesting the crime was committed elsewhere. The deed is attributed to a series of bizarre murders plaguing the city. Mr. O'Keefe was coachman to Lord Godalming and has no survivors.
Retirement. A.R. Sheerman, Chief Accountant to the Bank of England, has retired after 10 years of service. He gave ill health as the reason. Sheerman replaced the previous Chief Accountant, Oswald Mason, whose mysterious murder was solved by the consulting detective, Sherlock Holmes. Mysterious Livestock Deaths Farmers in Euston have complained to the local constabulary about the mysterious deaths of sheep and cattle. The animal corpses have been found lying in their fields, drained of blood. Closer examinations have revealed puncture wounds near the jugular veins of the poor creatures. We're off, sir. As soon as you'd tell me where you'd like to go. Please take me to 20 Surrey, The Strand. Here we are, sir. Safe and sound. A good day to you, driver. Right. Have a good day, sir. 9.45 a.m. 10 o'clock a.m. <laughs> Hello, sir. How's the day treating you? That could be better. Oh, I hate to see one of my customers in the mouse. <laughs> Tell you what, you give me your name and I'll get you a mug of ale on the house. Wow, Alexander Morris at your service. My name's Rebecca Eaton. I'm the owner of this fine establishment. Oh, careful. This one, Becky, is moody. Could be the murderer. <laughs> oh, keep your mouth shut. Don't mind them. They scared. Count of all the people being killed. Real unnatural like too. Heads cut off and the bodies all dry of blood. Hey, I'd lose my head for you, Becky. Oh, come on. <laughs> Strange killings they is. That woman in white been seen all over London. It's like that bloofer lady years ago. Bloofer? What kind of name is that? Never heard the like of four or since. She's a woman what bit young'uns on the neck. Where'd you hear this? I read it in a book. I was delivering a bunch of them to that bookstore in King's Cross. What's it called? Let's see. <laughs> Me noggin's gone all rusty. Goldstein and Horn Goldfield. Gold Acre? Yay, that's it. Gold Acre and Horn. <laughs> I found my way to the Saucy Jack, a pub full of local gossips. The regulars were eager for an audience, and I was told of the grisly murders and the eerie blue for lady. 11 o'clock a.m. That journey will take 25 minutes to go from the Strand to Marble Arch. By carriage, it will take 20 minutes to go from the Strand to King's Cross. That journey will take 25 minutes to go from King's Cross to Marble Arch. By carriage, it will take 20 minutes to go from the Strand to King's Cross. Where will Betsy here be taking us today, sir? Twenty three Luxboro in King's Cross, driver. Right on time, sir. Good day, driver. Good day, sir.
Hello. I'd like to send an overseas telegram, please. And what is the destination, sir? Bistritz. Bistritz. In Romania. In Romania. I have dispatched a telegram to Father Janos. It reads, I have arrived in... England and I'm looking into the circumstances of Quincy's death. Strange things are happening here. Please reply soon. Eleven thirty-five AM Good day, sir. Where might I be taking you? Please take me to 12 Oldbury, King's Cross. Here we are, sir. A good day to you, driver. Right. Have a good day, sir. May I help you? Mr. Horner? Alexander Morris. Mr. Holmwood has sponsored me into the Hades Club. I understand your partner is also a member? Oh, yes. Devlin mentioned you. It will be a pleasure having you in our club. What brings you to my little bookstore? Well, this might sound a little bit strange, but I've been told you have a book about the Blue for Lady. The Blue for Lady? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. Hmm? She would appear as a beautiful ghost-like woman with a horrible practice. And she would summon children only to return them later, some on the verge of death. The children would call her Blufa instead of beautiful. Yes, there's a striking resemblance to some other cases I know of. Um, how much do I owe you? A gift from one Lord of Hell to another. From the library of Dr. John Seward, perfectly to sign him. Hmm. Well, I do believe I've found the most curious bookstore in London. I've never seen such an odd collection of books. Horner certainly seems to know his business when it comes to ghastly legends. Hmm. It will take me 20 minutes to go from King's Cross to Paddington. That journey will take 25 minutes to go from King's Cross to Marble Arch. What part of our beautiful city would you like to see today, sir? I'd like to go to 52 Bishop's Bridge, Paddington. Right on time, sir. A good day to you, driver. Right. Have a good day, sir. Alfred Horner was kind enough to give me this book on the Blue for Lady. What do you want? Alexander Morris to see Dr. Seward. The doctor's busy. The loonies is acting up. Now go away! Grab him! Here, take this. You may need it. I'll see it till the doctor gets your car. It seems that Dr. Seward is a busy man. I couldn't see him today because his loonies are acting up. Perhaps I'll try him again later tonight. Twelve forty PM. Hmm. It will take me 15 minutes to go from Paddington. Hmm. 
It will take me 20 minutes to go from Paddington to Notting Hill. And where will we be off to this fine day? Fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. We're here, sir. Good day, driver. Good day, sir. This blackjack seems to be quite a deterrent against lunatics. Those are beautiful flowers, Mrs. Harker. Oh, I thank you, Mr. Morris. Well, I do love roses. They remind me of someone I once knew. Fragile, beautiful, <laughs> and dangerous. <laughs> and how are you, Mr. Morris? Well, I'm fine, but... I'm worried about my fiance, Anisette. Her father, Andrew Bowen, just passed away. Oh, how terrible. I'm sorry to hear it. I knew Mr. Bowen from business affairs. Poor Anisette. Well, I should tell her you send your condolences. But I'm afraid that's not all. The Homewood's carriage man has been, well, murdered. He was on his way to deliver a present to little Quincy. He was found decapitated, his body drained of blood. <sighs> Mina. Have you looked in on Quincy? Not for a while, no. Perhaps you should. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. Morris, but I have some pressing matters which I must attend to. But I wanted if to talk to you If you wish to talk business, then come to my office. I went to the Harkers to inform them of the bad news. I found it odd that Jonathan seemed more disturbed by the death of a stranger than that of Andrew Bowen. And what part of our beautiful city would you like to see today, sir? Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington. Here we are, sir. A good day to you, driver. Right. Have a good day, sir. 1.30 p.m. 1.45 p.m. 2 o'clock p.m. Mr. Stransikowski, how are you? So, it is the Texan seeking companionship in this time of loss. No, no, I just... Ah, <laughs> you think you know of loss? I lost my wife. Oh, my poor Ileana. But she is not dead. No, she lives. I have seen her walking in the moonlight. Get hold of yourself, man. Oh, Ileana. <laughs> I went to the Hades Club and had a miserable encounter with Stransikowski. He was well into his cups and quite delirious. He believes his dead wife is alive and attempting to communicate with him. Two thirty p.m. Where will Betsy here be taking us today, sir? I'd like to go to 19 St. Augustine's, Westminster. I'm happy to say that we have finally arrived. Good day, driver. Have a good day, sir. This is the calling card for Jonathan Harker's office in St. Paul's.
Oh, I'm sorry. Arthur isn't here. He's at a meeting with Mr. Stransikowski, a fellow member of the club. Yes, I've met Mr. Stransikowski. He's a rather odd man. Oh, but it is so sad. He was such a gifted composer before the death of his wife, Ileana. It was a carriage accident in Europe at a place called Borgo Pass. She was buried in London where her family rests. She must have been very beautiful. Oh, yes. Although I never met her. Uh, and the ceremony was a closed casket. Well, if you'll excuse me, I must deliver this present to the Harkers. Well, I'd be glad to do that for you, Mrs. Holmwood. Oh, I thank you. But call me Regina, please. I had a strange conversation with Regina Holmwood today. She told me of Leopold Stransikowski's tragedy. I feel sorry for him. The death of a loved one is always bitter. This gift was meant to be delivered to little Quincy Harker. Three thirty PM. We're off, sir. As soon as you tell me where you'd like to go. Please take me to 45 Fen Church, St. Paul's. I'm pleased to say that we have arrived at our destination, sir. Good day, driver. Right. Have a good day, sir. Regarding our previous agreement... Uh, Mr. Morris, how can I help you? I'm delivering this for the Homewoods. It was the gift their coachman was taking to Quincy before he... Yes, uh, well, thank you very much. I've come on personal business as well. I feel a bit foolish, really. I, I don't know where to begin. So many strange things that have happened, and, well, I have so many questions concerning yes, the... Well, I appreciate that you think I can help, Mr. Morris, but this is my business office, and I'm quite busy. I see. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. Wait. Mr. Morris, please, I don't wish to appear careless. Here. Take this. A friend of mine gave this to Mina during troubled times. She would like Anna Set to have it to comfort her. Thank you, Mr. Harker. I went to speak to Jonathan Harker, but he seemed far more interested in his dictaphone than answering my questions about Quincy. I believe he's avoiding the topic, but he was kind enough to give me a gift for Anna Set. Four twenty five PM And where will we off to this fine day? I'd like to go to ten Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. Here we are, sir. Safe and sound. Good day, driver. On a good day to you, sir. This cross necklace was a gift from the Harkers to Anisette. Come lay your weary troubled head upon my loving breast. Tomorrow brings the sun again, but now it is time to rest. Moonlight, hold you safe and warm, your brows the stars caress. Tomorrow brings the sun again, but now it is time to rest.
A lovely song. There you are, leaving poor Anna set alone at a time like this, you cad. Come sit by me, Alexander. Juliet just stopped by to try and cheer me up. She's offered to spend the night here. Always a pleasure to see you, Miss Adams. If anyone can make Anna feel better, it's you. The Harkers have also been generous. Mina wanted you to have this necklace. Jonathan said that it had been given to them during a time of loss as well. You know, it's strange. I hate to say it, but last night I had a dream about your father passing away. I saw him lying there as peaceful as can be. He seemed to look up and there was a woman standing beside him. She shone like an angel and reached for him. I saw his arms go to her and all around him was flowing white. And then she turned away and I woke up. I believe it was an angel come to take him to heaven. I feel her presence all around us. Even this cloth reminds me of my dream. May all of us go as peacefully. I'm so glad Juliet came to visit. Her very presence always seems to hearten Anaset. I just hope Anaset doesn't start having dreams like Juliet. Hopefully the Harker's necklace will make her feel somewhat better. Seven twenty five PM Lovely Juliet Adams handed me this rose. And where will we be going tonight, sir? Please take me to 20 Surrey, The Strand. Better bundle your coat, sir. We're here. Thank you, driver. Good night, sir. 8.30 p.m. 8.45 p.m. 9 o'clock p.m. Good Lord, what was that? It was a wolf's howl, Governor. That's not a sound you want to be hearing around here. Last time I heard that, it meant death. The Demeter Wolf, they called it. Come off a ghost ship in a storm, sent by the devil himself. Only one still aboard was a captain, dead. The beast fled that damn ship first chance it got, running off to the devil knows where. None of us saw it again till it came after me, made swales. I was watching from the woods, too far away to help. I seen it coming after him, snarling as loud as all the demons of hell. My knees gave out as I seen it leap at him. The merciful Lord blessed me, so I wouldn't remember what happened to him, but as I fell, I swear, that wolf reached for swales with two arms as human as yours or mine. Poor old soul. I never found the beast. It's still out there somewhere, waiting for its next victim. I heard the most interesting story at the Saucy Jack. The old man was actually shaking when he told me about the Demeter Wolf. Ten o'clock p.m. Where would you like to go this foul evening, sir? I'd like to go to 52 Bishop's Bridge, Paddington. 
We're here, sir. Thank you, driver. Good evening to you, sir. 10.40 p.m. Quincy's brother? I gladly shake your hand, sir. Your brother was a fine friend and a true gentleman. Well, thank you, sir. I was wondering if I might take a... I met my wits end for dealing with them. I can only think it is caused by the full moon. The red moon rising. So it's true then what they say about the moon and madness. The inmates often succumb to its influence. Farnsworth with his howling, Sherman drooling like a mad dog, and Renfield with his paranoid fits and ridiculous demands. It's almost as bad as the last time that... Yes, you were saying? I'm sorry I've bored you like this. I always ramble on about my work when I'm tired. Why don't you come back tomorrow after breakfast? All right, Doctor. I went to the asylum and met Dr. John Seward. His work seems most demanding. I found it odd that he avoided telling me more about the inmates and the effects of the moon. Eleven ten p.m. Where would you like to go this foul evening, sir? Please take me to 12 Oldbury, King's Cross. Better bundle your coat, sir. We're here. Thank you, driver. Good evening to you, sir. 11.30 p.m. 11.45 p.m. 12 o'clock a.m. That Alfred Horner is a strange man. The bookstore was closed when I got there, but I caught a glimpse of him through, through the window. He has a hidden room behind his shelves and was carrying a jar of what appeared to be blood. Good day, sir. Where might I be taking you? Please take me to 45 Holland, Notting Hill. We're here, sir. A good day to you, driver. And a good day to you, sir. 1.10 a.m. Mr. Alexander Morris, the evil awakens. Beware the night. Nothing is safe. If you respect your dead brother's memory, send me your findings. Vince's friends can verify my claims. Father Janos Korceni.
I received a message and a package from Father Janos. The message was quite vague and gave no hint as to the meaning of the Bowie knife. 1.25 a.m. Oh. And a set? Nightmares like the one I had last night have unfortunately become all too common as of late.